everyone. Ready Player Two just dropped into my Audible library and I really forgot I pre-ordered this. And also, I don't know if I need it. I remember when I saw that there was a sequel that I thought, hmm, do we need this? Is this necessary? What will it be about? I still don't know. I haven't checked what the sequel is going to talk about, what the plot is, what's going to happen, if it's got anything to do with Ready Player One. I don't know. I didn't really like Armada. It was kind of boring and drawn out and very similar to Ready Player One, but not in a good way, more in the boring way. And now I actually don't have any expectations, definitely not high expectations for Ready Player Two, which might be an advantage. So let's see. I'll go out before the rest of the sun goes away. Hey, standing under a light so that you can see me. I finished the beginning and it actually continues where things stopped in the first book, which is nice. We have Percival exploring the oasis again and finding a new toy. It's a headset that connects his brain to the oasis. So there's no gear, but just really he is able to feel everything. And the idea is that you can experience other people's feelings through their body. So you can Somebody uses this headset and they experience something and then you can view their footage, sort of, with the experiences they have. You're not in control, but you are experiencing the same things. And now there's something going to happen which starts the whole tale off. And I don't know if that's going to make it worse. I'm very negative about this book. I don't know why. Another light, as I expected. It's another Easter egg hunt. So, I don't know, it sounds all very dramatic and time passes fast. Very few social interactions in, I think, three years past now before they even get close to anything. And even though the voice is the same and it's really nice to be back in the world, it kind of feels, yeah, similar, like a copy. So let's see what happens. And it's all superlatives. Everything is the grand scheme of the world and such. We'll see. I listened to some more and I like it more because there's more character action. But there's still a lot of similarities to the first book. There is mention again of how the Oasis is addictive and a place of escapism and it's a way of ignoring the problems of the real world and the real world is getting worse and they're discussing it more but I don't know if it's going anywhere. I'm curious to see what happens about this. Then there's also Wade. He's weird. I don't remember him being such an asshole. He doesn't come across very likable at the moment. And I have two theories about that. One is maybe to show that winning this whole thing and inheriting all the money and the oasis has been bad for his character and that he didn't handle it well. He's gotten more addictive to the Oasis and what that does to him. And this new Easter hunt, he's of course obsessive again. And I'm wondering if his decline in likability is to put him back at the spot where he was at the beginning of Ready Player One, mostly alone and obsessed with this Easter egg hunt. So, I don't know. There are some interesting bits. It's not bad. It's more of the same, sort of. It's likable. Reading is, or listening to it is fun, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm about two, three hours in, so not much happened yet. But there's a new crew of Gunters, and if that goes away where I'm thinking it's going, I think this is going to be more or less a parallel duplicate of Ready Player One in a new setting with a new Easter hunt with new characters. Mm. So I'm enjoying it. I finished the book and let's not talk too much more about the details of the story because that's gonna hit spoiler territory and it is actually more fun to go into the next events not knowing too much about them. So overall I think this is mostly a redemption arc quest thing. And while well, the beginning is rather 
slow and a little bit annoying and Wade is, yeah, like I said, he's kind of weird. And throughout the book, in the middle part, extremely, it's a lot of fun. It's similar to Ready Player One. It's the same style of narration, the same style of game. There are some twists and turns, different things, but overall it is very similar in what happens or how the story things happen. And it's enjoyable. It's not bad. It's not that it is as innovative and surprising as with the first book, but how can that be? We have the first book already. So if you don't mind that it's very similar, this is going to be very enjoyable. I really enjoyed the narration, I really enjoyed the audiobook and the things that happened in the middle. And then we come to the ending. When it comes to the ending, I'm not completely into that. Like the beginning, I had problems with that. And in the ending, some things didn't reappear, but it was after everything was fine, there was this drop and change of things and I was like, hmm, didn't really need that. I don't know what it wants to tell me. Then there's all these other things that are not addressed again. There are a lot of things unmentioned, like how the climate and the earth is crumbling and everybody's just going on escapism and everything. And nothing else comes of that. And I don't really know I like that. This book feels in a lot of places like it's ticking off current events or current topics and chiming in on them. Not badly, but it somehow feels disconnected to some things, just like wanting to make a comment on things. And the ending feels kind of like embarking on something completely new and which clearly the author and the main character and the people who are in the book, the characters talking about this and looking at it as a, as a positive ending are pro. But I don't know if I'm pro that ending and that outlook. Not sure. Not sure. But anyways, if you're thinking about reading this book as it's a sequel, if you like the first book, I think you will like the second book as well because it has a lot of things in common with the first book. And if you like the trivia, the quest, all of that is about as much fun as in the first book. The characters are, after the first hurdles in the beginning, they tend to be more fun as well and there's more character interaction going on than in the beginning. and it turns out it's a lot of interesting facts and yeah, some trivia. If you enjoyed that about the first book, you're definitely going to get that in the second book as well. Other than that, if you didn't like the first book, don't even bother touching this one. Thank you all for watching. Let me know in comments if you have read the book and or if you want to and what you think about the ending if you have read the book. Please put up a spoiler warning. Thanks for watching. Bye.